come and worship the Lord today. If you got your Bibles with you this morning, I invite you to turn with us to the 10th chapter of Hebrews, the 23rd verse this morning. My understanding is I'm supposed to be preaching a sermonette this morning to let you inform you that sermonette is not in my vocabulary. <laughs> but we'll see what we can do this morning. Uh, I'm going to speak on a topic this morning uh, of faithfulness. We're going to be covering quite a few um, scriptures this morning, but we're going to start off in the 10th chapter. We're going to see what Brother Paul has to say. If you read throughout the book of Hebrews, you'll find out that I believe that uh, Paul is speaking to the church and he's talking about sacrifices, things that they did in the Old Testament, which we don't do anymore. And... Um, Matter of fact, I bought a new Bible a few weeks ago and, and I brought it with me this morning and I just hope, looked on the back and it says that the cover of my new Bible is goat skin leather. I said a goat has sacrificed his life to make that cover. But we don't have sacrifices that they did when they uh, back then. So uh, I'm just going to speak to you just a few minutes this morning on the topic of being faithful. Uh, if you have your place this morning, 10th chapter, the 23rd verse of Hebrews, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he, for he who promised is faithful. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for another opportunity to come and speak and, and just worship you. Thank you, Lord, for the singing this morning. Thank you for the ones that have come to be a part of our service. And thank you, Lord, for our visitors that have come and been a part of our service. Have your way in everything we do here today, Lord. We'll just give you uh, thankful, just give you thanks for everything you do for us. Thank you for being faithful in our lives in Christ Jesus. Amen. All, all of us, sometime or another, have heard the uh, words of old faithful. Uh, thumbing through the channels like most men do. I, I was thumbing through the channels on TV and I came across a, on the historical channel which was talking about Old Faithful. Uh, some of you probably have seen it. Old Faithful is uh, a geyser located in the state of Wyoming. It is uh, is in Yellowstone National Park. And Old Faithful was discovered by a group of explorers while they was on expedition going through the great Northwest. And the reason that the geyser was named Old Faithful is because one of the most predictable geographical uh, things happened, features on the, on the earth. This geyser erupts every 63 minutes, 24 hours a day, 365 days of the year. So if you walk, if you was there at the park and you walk through the, the national park and it shoots up this water out of the ground and you can walk around and look at other things, but you would come back 63 minutes later and there it goes off again. When we think of faithfulness, we think of an elder couple who has stuck through thick and thin for 50, 60, 70 years. When we think of uh, faithfulness, we think of a close friend who knows everything about us and he still loves us anyway. Well, when it comes to faithfulness, nobody does it better than God, our Heavenly Father. I looked up the definition this past week on the word faithfulness or faithful is to be steadfast, to be dedicated, to be dependable, to be worth of truth, to trust of a person when he's telling you something, being loyal to you, unchanging, grounding in a relationship to the other. 
Faithfulness is used both in the Old Testament and also in the New Testament to describe God's relationship with the world today. So the Bible is filled with scripture reminding us how great, how great faithfulness of God is over in Deuteronomy. I'm going to give you quite a bit of scripture today. And if you don't, uh, you're not able to write it all down, just see me and I'll take your name and I'll give you an outline of my message today to give you the scripture. But over in the book of Deuteronomy 7 and 9, it says, Therefore know that the Lord your God, he is God, the faithful God, who keeps the covenant and mercy for thousands of generations with those who love him and keep his commandments. What I like about this scripture is he keeps keeps covenant and mercy for thousands of generations with those who love him and keep his commandment. He's talking about us. He's talking about the Christian after generation, after generation, after generation. He will continue to love us and keep, as long as we keep his commandments. In Psalms 36 and 5, 36 chapter to 35th verse, it says, Your mercy, O Lord, is in heaven. Your faithfulness is reaches to the clouds. Psalms 89 and 2. For I have said, mercy shall be built forever, up forever. Your faithfulness you shall establish in the heavens, in the very heavens. And last week, Tyler spoke out of the third chapter of, of uh, Lamentations in the third chapter, the 22nd and 23rd verse. He said, though the Lord's mercy, we are not consumed because he has his compassions fails not. And they are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. Faithfulness is one of the attitude of God's unchanging nature. God has always been faithful. He's still faithful and he's going to be faithful to the end. God was faithful. There's a lot of places in the scripture today that God is faithful. If you go back and, and search the scriptures and see how God was faithful. God was faithful to provide a ram in the bushes for Abraham's sacrifice so he wouldn't have to take the life of his son. When God told Abraham and he spoke to him and said, take your son, your only son, Isaac, and carry him up on the mound and you're going to use him as a sacrifice. And when he got there, he thought he was going to actually give a sacrifice to the Lord and use his son. Then he found there was a ram over in the bushes that were uh, stuck and God used that ram to be faithful to uh, 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 Abraham. God was faithful to bring Joseph out of the Egypt prison and place him in a high position in Egypt's government. God was faithful even to Noah and his family to see them through the floods. God was faithful to protect Daniel in the lion's den. And not only that, he was also faithful to the three Hebrew children, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when they were thrown into the fire furnace. But he was also faithful to us. He was the faithful to us to deliver Jesus from the grave by resurrecting him back to life on the third day. On the third day, he came out of the tomb. He was faithful to us. God was faithful to deliver us from eternal death through the sacrifice of his only begotten son. So we see here this morning that God has been faithful, that he's still faithful, and God will always be faithful. How faithful are we today? Are we this faithful as we talk about God's word today? I want to speak to you of four things this morning on being faithful. How God's faithfulness, he keeps all his promises, first of all. God keeps his promises to keep all the promises in Psalms 145, 13. The latter part of that verse, it says, the Lord is trustworthy in all the promises and faithful in all his doings. 
If you should sit down and look throughout the scripture from the book of Genesis through the book of Revelation, you would find out that there are 3,500 promises in God's word. We have, all, we have all had people make promises to us, but they break them. We ask people to do favors for us, and they break those promises. But there's not one single promise in God's word, 3,500 promises in the Bible where God spoke and he broke it. That's not the way God is. God is trustworthy in all his promises. And those things when you feel as though God has forsaken you. Just remember in Hebrews, the 13th chapter, the 5th verse, he says, Never will I leave you, nor will I forsake you. Those times when you are weak and feel totally de defeated, remember that God tells us also, He promises us in 2 Corinthians 12, 9, My strength, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength make perfect in weakness. Those are times we have lost all the hope that your situation or ever, the ever go we ever going to get any better. But we can always remember that God has promised us throughout his scripture that he will be with us. In Romans 8, 28 says, we know all things work together for good to those who love God and those who are come according to his purpose. God will keep his promises. God is faithful in doing that today. Those are times when we are so weary and worn out from trials and troubles of this life. Remember God's promise. He tells us in the 11th chapter of Matthew, the 28th verse, Come unto me, all that labor and heavy laden, I will give you rest. God is faithful in keeping his promises. Not only that, number two, God is faithful to deliver us in time of temptation. In 1 Corinthians 10, 13, he says, Taking you except such is common to man, but God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what he, you are able. But with the temptation will also be made a way of escape that you may be able to bury it. Every single day, Satan, he tries to get into our minds. He tries to get into our hearts. And the way he does this is through temptations that we see every day of our lives. Sometimes we face temptation that they are so powerful it seems as though we're not going to make it. But Paul here reminds us that of every comfort, he, he, he promised us the comforting promise in his verses that God is faithful to us. God said he has not not going to put more on you than, than you can bear. The scripture tells us when we are tempted we will not allow Satan to tempt us beyond what we can bear today. But with every temptation God is faithful to provide a way to escape because the scripture tells us that today. God is faithful to keep his promises. He's faithful to keep uh, deliver us from all temptation. And third, God is, pay, uh, he is faithful to forgive us of all of our sins today. Sin is a struggle for every one of us today, sitting here in this room today. In 1 John, it tells us in the first chapter, the eighth verse, he said, If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But then listen to what the wonderful promise is in the next verse. In the next verse, in 1 John 1, 9, he says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful. He is faithful just to forgive of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And yet, despite the wonderful promise, many Christians still struggle with this to accept God's forgiveness of sin. Many live with their lives nagging, feeling that their sins are too great or there are too many that God won't forgive you. I don't care how many sins you have committed in your lifetime, God will forgive you of, this, of those sins. So instead of living a joyful life, a victorious life, Christian life, they live in defeat and discouragement because they think God won't forgive them of their sin. They live in defeat. How much sin will God forgive? What is his limit? 
that he will forgive us of our sins. We see that John said he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He said all unrighteousness. He, that means all of your sins. If you fail, if you have come short of the glory of God, you can ask God to come in to forgive you your sins and he will do that. God's willingness to forgive us is not based on our worth, what we're worth to be forgiven. It's based on God's faithfulness to forgive us. And we recognize that today. God is faithful to keep us all his promises. He's promised us he will deliver us from all temptations. He has promised us to forgive us of our sins. And fourth thing and final, God said faithful. He is faithful to even when we are faithless. He's going to still be faithful. God is God and God, we can't be God, but God is faithful to us each and every day. In 2 Timothy 2.13, 2, he says, If we are faithless, we remain, we remain faithful. He cannot deny himself. If you go back and look at Matthew, the 8th chapter, we see that Jesus was asleep in the bottom of a boat. As he was sleeping in the bottom of the boat, a storm comes up out of the Sea of Galilee. And the, and the disciples cried out and said, Lord, save us. And we are, we are Persian. Do you remember what, God, what Jesus was sleeping down in the boat? What he told his disciples? He, they woke him up from a terrible storm out on the Sea of Galilee. And as he was woken up from sleep, he said, Why are you fearful? Oh, you little faith. Oh, you little faith. And then Jesus rebuked the winds and the sea and everything was calm. When after he woke up, he calmed the storm down. He calmed the sea down. And if you go from the 8th chapter of Matthew to the 14th chapter of Matthew, you see where we find here is Peter, disciples out in again, out on the water. And, and Peter steps out of the water to walk on the water to meet Jesus. When, G, when he saw Jesus walking on the water, he thought he saw a ghost. And one of the disciples even said that. He says, I believe it's a ghost. They recognized him as Jesus. And Jesus, as Peter stepped out, he began to sink. As he began to walk on the water and he began to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. And Jesus responded, oh, you little faith, why did you doubt? I don't know about you, but I can certainly relate to the disciples. There are many times when my faith is weak. And I wonder how many times God has shook his head and said, Oh, Harold, you little faith. You just got to have faith. Every one of us today go through trials and troubles and test and test our faith. And sometimes we pass and sometimes we fail. The same thing when you were going to school. Sometimes you pass, sometimes you fail. But you didn't quit. And God doesn't quit. Aren't you thankful that God is faithful to us today? Even those times when your faith and mine is not what it ought to be. But God is going to be faithful through the scripture. So we see in our scripture this morning four things today that I have shared with you today. If God is faithful to keep his promises, he is faithful to deliver us from temptation. He is faithful to forgive you of your sins. If you're here this morning and don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you don't have a time in your life that you remember to ask and cry out and say, God, forgive me of my sins, he can do that today. God is faithful even when we are faithless. God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. This morning, as we close out the service this morning, I just want you to realize that how faithful God is. And then we need to sit back and say, God, how faithful am I to you? Am I faithful to you? I know, I know some years ago, I mean many years ago, Matter of fact, 1969, I accepted the Lord as my Lord and Savior. 
And when I realized that I was a sinner dying and on the way to hell and I asked God to come in my life, I signed a contract with him. And I told God, I said, I'll be faithful to you as long as you are faithful to me. And he told me he would always be faithful. I believe, that, uh, I believe that when God calls us, He wants us to do things for Him. I don't know what it is, singing in the choir, come to church, being faithful, being there uh, supporting God's preacher in the pulpit. Whatever the case may be, being, we need to be faithful for God has been faithful to us and He's been so faithful to us. You tell me somebody else that would send their only son to die on the cross for you and for me. And I've said this so many times here in this church and other churches. Who am I that a king, that a king would bleed and die for? Who am I? I'm nobody. You're nobody in the sight of God. But I'm trying to tell you this morning, God loves you. And this morning, I'm going to ask Kim if she would come down as we get ready for the invitation this morning. I'm going to ask Kim if she would come down and lead us in the auditorium in the invitation this morning. And God is faithful this morning. If you're not being faithful to God, you need to be. Would you please stand this morning as Kim leads us in our song this morning?